I am Timur Sol, and this is basically Feywild, a show where I talk about different things Fey related. Actually, this is the last episode of basically Feywild, or the penultimate episode of basically Feywild, and this will, will be probably the least Feywildish episode, actually, because this will be a broader episode about where you can find inspiration for your different um, potential ideas for your Feywild, for your Feywild, Feywild environment, for your Feywild aristocracy, for your Feywild monsters, for your Feywild plots, and so on and so on. Um, this is the broadest topic because this also can be used in many different uh, TTRPG games, not only D&D, &D, uh, the things that I will show you how I approach this topic is basically very, very universal. With less than a week uh, until the uh, publication of the new D&D uh, Wizards of the Coast book Wild Beyond the Witchlight. It is important, I believe, to understand that the Feywild is not um, necessarily limited to the official publications and official lore that you will get from the book. Now, it is very important to make that book a must-have position for me. Uh, and I strongly believe and I'm sure that it's going to be a wonderful adventure and it's going to set precedence on how to roleplay Feywild and how to use mechanics in Feywild. But there are things beyond the Witchlight, and I mean beyond the book, beyond the Witchlight. Uh, there are things uh, that you can add, that you can read about, that you can inspire yourself by um, in many, many great ways. And I would like to show some of those ways today uh, during the almost last episode of uh, basically Feywild. And we will start with, um, with something that is the hardest and the simplest at the same time. When we talk about Feywild, we often talk about how mm, incredible the environment is, how mm, magical it is, how extraordinary, how strange, how, how wicked it, it might look. Now, it's hard to imagine such a thing. It's hard to imagine how, how should a wicked environment look like. Should it be... Um, simply strange in colors? Should it be strange in architecture, in geometry, in geography, in something else? What does it make? What, is it, what makes it strange? What makes it awkward? Well, probably the smallest things, uh, that would be my answer. And a thing that I sometimes do when I need to describe territory or an, or an environment that is strange is that I look up strange environments in, uh, on, on Earth, basically. You can also search for strange environments in different parts of um, of the universe, and there are a great many pictures from Hubble Telescope and other um, other extraterrestrial uh, tools that would help you with that. And there are many great movies uh, that show you some you know bi biology or some extraterrestrial landscapes. There's an astonishing amount of games that happens, and um, I'm talking mostly about PC games that happen in. Uh, in the deep, deep space. And the people that made those games, they are the best in their art when it comes to figuring what does it mean to be strange, what does it mean to, be, it, to create something awkward and extraterrestrial and alien, basically. And uh, this is my go-to, actually. So, on the slideshow, you see pictures that were taken on Earth. Um, these are not manipulated in any way by me. Um, and please tell me they're not alien they are unique they are incredible and for example this over here uh this already um sparks my ideas for a fish uh, red court maybe a vampire court maybe a court of flowers where everything is red it does somewhat resemble some autumnish vibes so uh this already just uh, sparks my vibe and one thing before we go further there's this thing that I'm a very visual person and most of us are visual people. Uh, so for visual people, pictures are the world. Um, so you get this unique opportunity to just peruse the internet and find whatever you need on it. And this is, uh, this is a method that I use often when I talk about environments. Um, another thing is when you want your Feywild encounter to happen somewhere on a Feyish court, for example. And you're figuring how should your um, fish architecture look like? Uh, should it be strange? Should it be, um, again, alien or extraterrestrial? 
how to plan the rooms and so on and again this is very universal in fact um you can also look up how normal human castle look like so for example this is a bavarian castle that looks like i would just take it straight from a fairy tale if you wouldn't notice the if you wouldn't see the buildings in the back and the human trees um just add some colors to it add some flying monsters add some flair to this picture and you already have a page court a potential page court um you can change the towers into for example tree stumps why not you can change the trees that surround the castle to giant mushrooms and you can have flying creatures on brooms this would basically make it a um awkward mix of hogwarts and uh and some other type of um of magical place but this is how how you can approach it you don't need to figure things out from scratch other people did that already you don't need to invite invent the wheel um again and additionally for example over here you already have floor plans um if you're not good at battle maps i mean these would probably work well um and if you're good at battle maps you can just take them and rearrange them and make them your uh your go-to battle map or your go-to environment map when you plan something like this um so this is when it comes to the basics to the environment to the architecture to stuff like that but what if we would like to do something uh, more crazy uh we know that half of our games maybe even more as battles and things like that so we often need monsters and in one of the episodes earlier I've been talking about how to create fish monsters uh, looking at different folk folklore, different myths from around the world, how to take that myth and uh, rearrange it so that it is um, so that it is a stat block and a monster with its own lore and own um, own ecosystem, let's call it. Um, and this what I'm going to show you in a second also ties with that, although not directly. Um, an amazing thing when it comes to um, bots, monsters, uh, adventure hooks, and so on, are movies. And I'm not talking only about the good movies. I'm not talking about movies that are blockbusters from Hollywood. I'm talking about things like this, like uh, The Brain from the Planet Arrows, or uh, were Werewolves and Bikes, or um, Brazil or Fire and Ice, the, the cartoon, the motion picture basically movies that are um in their narrative layer often considered very um naive let's call it or strange or awkward there are a lot of plot hooks there are other uh, sorry plot holes there are a lot of uh, loops in the in the fabule um there are a lot of things going on that just don't make sense uh, so, for example, if you watch Flash Gordon, a uh, movie from, I think it's 70s, maybe 80s, but I think it's 70s. Um, if you watch Flash Gordon, the movie is uh, A, classic. B, it, got, it, it has Queen as the soundtrack, so that's really rad. Uh, but C, it's really strange. But strange um, narratives in movies and even, I would dare say, bad narratives in movies make good narratives in Dungeons and Dragons and in TTRPG games. This is uh, sad but in a way, but it's also a fact. Um, you don't have enormous elaborate plots in your D&D games uh, or other games. You usually need something rather simple, um, rather straightforward, and rather super strange like uh, this one over here. Now, uh, would Flash Gordon or uh, Fire and Ice or some other uh, movie go to Hollywood right now and create some amazing fuss all around them? Probably not. It's like we're talking about movies like Iron Sky, like uh, Sharknado, like stuff like that. You, you understand, you catch my drift. Uh, Zombieverse. <laughs> I mean, movies that are considered to be movies. The narratives that you have in B-movies are good for your games. And you can catch many different ideas of that from those movies to your, um, to your own game. But let's go back to, um, to the Feywild. 
in a couple of days, in a week, I believe, we will have the new uh, Feywild book, uh, Wild Beyond the Witchlight. But I dare say that there's there's a many great things beyond beyond the Witchlight. Um, if you want to gather more knowledge, more inspiration from lore books or from other books or publications that are uh, fate related, then I would encourage you to check out this few titles that I prepared for you today. First thing is always check out the previous editions. That's my absolutely go-to when uh, I want something inspiring and I want to understand how the development process looks like and how it looked like. Why are things nowadays like they are? Uh, how come they have some... Um, they all usually have some leftovers from previous editions, some uh, hidden underlined uh, narrative that is somewhere over there. So in the fourth edition, you would go to Heroes of the Feywild or Manual of the Plains. And these are the two titles that you can get uh, on DM's Guild, I believe, um, without any problems. It's a PDF file. And in these two, you will find many, many uh, great ideas for your Fey adventures. Not only Fey, uh, the Manual of Planes is something that I thoroughly miss in the 5th edition. It was present in the 3rd edition, it was present in the 4th edition. It's not present in the 5th edition. It's something I miss a lot. I believe this is one of the more important books for Dungeon Masters. Um, but yeah, that's, that's how it is. So you need to go to the previous editions if you want to read about how the planes are... Uh, situated to each other how they interact and what they are now do remember that Feywild as an outer plane as a plane um, started to exist in fact as a as a separate plane in fourth edition so in third edition book you only would get a small blurb i believe maybe three paragraphs or something like that uh, about it um so it's not like you're gonna get a whole heaps of knowledge from these books but you will get some and especially heroes of the Feywild um, that is a book oriented towards players, but as a DM, you will also get a lot of things that you can um, just suck out of it. Uh, another thing uh, is contemporary publications. Um, now, Feywild didn't start to exist right now, and uh, many authors found Feywild as a super interesting place. And similarly to me, they fell in love with the Feywild and wanted to to elaborate on the lore and on the creatures and on many other things that are Feyish connected. So here are two good examples that I would, without hesitation, um, uh, I would say that you can, without hesitation, I would say that these two are uh, most definitely worth your while. Uh, the Book of the Fey, or Fey Beastary by Team Gonzalez, and Monsters of the Fey World from Andrew Cowood. These two books are books that are specifically aimed towards monsters and towards stat blocks with some additional lore. They have a very different style and different approach towards um, towards these stat blocks and towards the layout. Monsters of the Feywild, uh, you can already see by the cover, it's more cartoonish in its style, but obviously it's not cartoonish in the stat block level. Uh, the Book of the Fey, a Fey Beast Fairy by, uh, by Tim Gonzalez, it's um, Mr. Gonzalez produced a series of different books. I have his uh, Constructs and Fey book, and both of them are really great. These are hundreds of pages long, and they are absolutely amazing. Um, if you are searching for monsters, you could absolutely go to those books, and I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't fret that you will be disappointed. We will get back to monsters in a little bit, but now let's talk about more general um, books. There are books like the Fey Folio from Mage Hand Press and Matthew's Guide to Wonderland. Um, the uh, Guide to Wonderland, by the way, is pay what you want on DM's Guild. So you can basically um, download the books for free, but I would encourage you to pay something for the books because it's a whole series of books. It's, I believe, nine uh, or eight positions in one download uh, with supplementary adventures, with um, stat blocks, with approaches to the Feywild and so on. There's an interesting choice in the layout of the book. It's uh, often black or dark grayish, so it's, uh, it's something rather unique in, um, in books, as most of them would rather tend toward the uh, old manuscript page, like uh, which is typical for uh, Dungeons and Dragons books. 
We also have uh, other publications like uh, Wanderer's Guide to Feywild, Fairy Passions, Fairy Mysteries. Um, these two on the right side, uh, just above me, uh, are interesting smaller booklets that add additional mechanics to your game. So you would have, for example, um, in, fairy, uh, in, fairy, in Fairy Mysteries, you would have an additional mechanic of um, effects that the Feyish creatures have on, or the Fey Wild as the plane has on the material plane, with some rippling effects uh, or some some wave effect, and uh, it's basically uh, written down point by point and level by level of the influence, what happens, how you can, um, what you can do about it, how it influences uh, the players, how it influences NPCs and when it happens so it's a very very interesting position in my um in my lab library i also would like to um talk uh, just a little bit about this book through the veil tales of the feywild this is a magnificent book it's also uh, i believe over 100 page pages long and this is basically an adventure book where you don't get one adventure in the inside you get one two three four five six seven eight nine ten adventures um, and these adventures are leveled from 1 to 20. Uh, this is a very unique thing where you get an adventure that is a high level adventure with, uh, with your players being able to spread their wings uh, throughout it. And, and additionally, you get battle maps, you get stat blocks, you get magic items, you get alternatives and during the game. It's a very, very robust adventure. And again, I would emphasize that this is... Um, something worth having in your personal uh, library now if you aren't uh, one of those guys that uh, care about it um, you can also uh, reach to other uh, types of ptrpg games you don't have to restrict yourself to uh, D&D so for example we have Ars Magica over here on uh, the um, on the left side, I believe it's left for you, and above me, Monster Advancements Enhanced uh, Fey is from Pathfinder. And in this book, for example, I found an amazing amount of uh, Fey Bargain ideas. Uh, and if you watched the Fey Bargains uh, episode, it was largely based also on this book. Not only on this book, because Pathfinder doesn't port directly to Dungeons and Dragons and you need to have some work, but it, it's all about ideas, about inspiring yourself. So uh, what can you get from these two? Well, the whole world, actually. There's a lot of things that are described in these two books. And uh, I would say that Ars Magica is such a huge thing that it's uh, to go through the whole book is, uh, is a big challenge. And I didn't manage to do that because I'm a D&D player. I am a D&D DM. Um, I didn't manage to go through the whole book because it's just so, so huge. And there are many mechanics that are inside it. Just I don't care about them because it's not my game. But the ideas about the world, how fairies work, how they act, how to roleplay one, uh, you really wouldn't get a better uh, deal out of a book. Now, the thing that I showed you before a second and a minute is these two. You also don't have to actually uh, spend any money to uh, get some good Feywild inspiration. These two are homebrew, these are community made. Um, Grim Dark, a book of fairy tales and forest and fairies by Ninja Pron. Um, these are supplements that are around 50, pa 50 pages long. Um, I believe that forest and fairies have additional stat blocks. I think Grim Dark has less of them, um, but both do a great job when it comes to describing the Feywild and describing. Uh, more important entities that live in the Feywild, especially Grimdark, is an amazing book. It's really well written, uh, simple, but uh, but very inspirational for me. Uh, good layout. Everything is basically done on a very high level. It would just need some editing polishing and it would be um, a very, very good product for, uh, for DMs Guild. Um, these are the books to which you could go if you would be interested in, um, in getting more inspiration for your Feywild adventures and for your Feywild world. Um, I would like to point to you to one more thing, if you allow me, um, because for me, the world building starts with 
the creatures that live in the world. I don't start with grass or trees or how the environment looks like. That is an approach that you can take. Um, but I do start usually with creatures that live there. And when I see a creature, I imagine what uh, world it could live uh, or in what environment it could live. So what I would do if I would be searching for um, some inspiration for some creatures is I would go to ArtStation or DeviantArt, but rather ArtStation actually. And on ArtStation, I would just randomly pick something I want. Or I could obviously look at character design and um, would probably find something that is interesting on first look. Uh, okay, we have a concept of a orc or something, a mecha orc. Uh, let's check out this artist. Mm. Okay, we have some more shadow fell uh, vibe over here. We have an orc uh, with a bow, I believe, or a magic staff. Um, let's check further. Uh, we're going to go back to the main page of ArtStation and uh, choose something different. Maybe let's go to um, concept art. I'll ch check 2D. There's a lot of contemporary con concept art, but for example, look at this guy. Look at this. I mean, this is a ready, uh, this is a ready idea for a creature. Now, these creatures look usually nasty. These are usually these are nasty, awful creatures that uh, would be the evil monsters. But I mean, why not? This is a brilliant fake creature. This this could be the Duke of uh, of food, for example. And you already have some concept for uh, for a new fake creature. And this is this is my way of um, of getting myself inspired. Uh, creatures that are connected somewhere, somewhat or somehow with nature, like over here. This is also very inspiring because you can think about different uh, traits that these animals have. A lion would be uh, would be very brave. Uh, um, uh, a, a wolf would be brawny and stuff like that. Uh, you got someone who uh, draw um, Kratos from uh, from God of War. So we know that this is going to be a great artist and you can just produce through his art and find stuff like this. Now, again, maybe not the best for a, for a Feywild creature, but maybe so. I mean, why not? And you have many, many different options. You can find, for example, animals and wildlife uh, and just search for what you need at this specific moment. And uh, depending on how what your campaign vibe is, uh, you might be searching for uh, less gruesome or more gruesome uh, creatures. Uh, I'm usually, uh, sadly, looking for more gruesome creatures because they are uh, the more interesting ones for me. Uh, but uh, as said, it all depends on how you play your uh, you play your campaigns. And in fantasy, you can find stuff like this. I think we just hit jackpot when it comes to uh, to the Feywild. Now, isn't this cute? This is super cute. If you don't like that, please turn off YouTube. Just find something cuter if you think you can. Um, this is a fat dinosaur. How beautiful is this? Look at how satisfying it is. Okay, but getting back to books, um, I did reach out to a couple of authors of the books that really inspired me during um, these, this seri these series. And I asked them if they would be uh, willing to allow me to show you a few pages from those books, uh, so that um, so that you'd basically know uh, how these books are structured and how they function. So the first uh, couple of books, and I'm just going to show you one of them, um, are by Ned Turner. Ned Turner is an absolute maniac when it comes to Feywild. Uh, I met him at the Discord and hopefully he will uh, be so nice to talk with me about The Wild Beyond the Witchlight when the book comes out um, in a week. Uh, we will have a chat somewhere in September, hopefully, uh, and this will be the ultimate episode of Basically Feywild. So as said, Ned is an absolute maniac. These are only four books, but he wrote several books about the Feywild, and this is from the Fey Compendium. 
Um, now, as mentioned, these will be just uh, selected pages from the books. So you can see how they are structured, how they look like, um, what you can find inside. Uh, I'm not going to give away whole books or paragraphs or something like that. Well, paragraphs, yeah, but not chapters. Um, because, yeah, I respect the authors. They put a lot of art and work in to this. Um, so what will we find here? What is interesting in a Fey compendium, you will not only find new monsters, you will find a role-playing Fey, a whole chapter divided, uh, devoted for that. Um, you will find a chapter about the Fey world general, and only after that will you find the monsters. So uh, you will get info about politics, about um, about how Fey function when uh, when we are talking about their memories. So um, Fey have very long memories, and they see no qualm with uh, punishing a humanoid for a perceived slight, uh, slight done against them from decades down ago. Uh, or even for one committed by a creature's ancestor, so similar to dragons. Uh, fey revenge often is difficult to identify as revenge, as it can often simply appear to be a string of bad luck, freak accident, or an unexplained, unexplained disappearance. Um, but you also, uh, these paragraphs, this is something that is hard to figure out, but easy to write down. Uh, and I often find in different books things that are not explained enough in mechanics. You get this broad idea that oh the Feywild should be strange or the Fey traveling in the Feywild should be problematic, but you don't get a proper mechanic setting behind that. And throughout the whole of this series, I try to show you that mechanics can be fun and can be something that you can do. And in these books that I'm showing you right now, you get the mechanics also. So you get what Fey magic, additional magic and not magic, um, some Fey creatures should have. You get information about uh, specific uh, non-vague curses and gifts that a fae could have um, bestowed you on. Um, so the target must sink everything they speak. That's a very fae-ish curse. Um, it might be hard, but it's something really, really um, worth your while. And if not, you can roll, consider a minor or major detrimental property from the Dun Dungeons Master Guide and you get a page. So um, very specific uh, things backed with lore and this is again something uh, very interesting fey diseases and uh, poisons uh, so this is the next chapter al already for example ice blood when a humanoid or fey witnesses a close friend or loved one die in fey wild or an area touched uh, by the fey wild it must make a dc 15 charisma saving throw or contract ice blood the saving throw may is made with disadvantage if the loved one was the creature's romantic partner. Iceblood has an incubation period of 1d4 days. Uh, once symptoms manifest, the infected creature becomes ice cold to the touch and its emotions become dulled and distanced. It has disadvantage on charisma, skill checks, and death saving throws, and cannot rage, gain inspiration, or become frightened or charmed. Each time an infected creature uh, completes a short rest in a the low freezing temperature or takes full damage it must make dc 15 constitution save throw or the charisma score is reduced by one and so on and so on so very clear mechanics uh, with additional lore backing that up which i really really like and obviously a big portion of the fake compendium is um is the monsters and what i also like a lot and i did talk about that throughout the whole series is that you don't need to just be specifically focused on uh, the Anglo-Saxon feyish creatures that are in the European mythology, you can have mythology from all around the world and it works and works well. So you have Baku over here, which is definitely not a European uh, monster, uh, with a CR12 with lore backing it up, and this is a lawful good creature, which is also nice to have some good creatures that can back your players in one way or another, uh, if you have a good campaign. Uh, you have a ladrin, which are, uh, again, these are creatures that are present in D&D, um, in &D, but there's a different approach over here. Um, and you have evil creatures. This is a CR14 Rage Walker. Uh, I believe the lore for Rage Walkers war is on the uh, page, um, one page er earlier, but I did uh, cut that out. And what I also like about these creatures is that they have many possibilities. They have an action, but they have also two reactions, which is very nice since, you know, action-oriented monsters are a thing. 
What I also appreciate about Fay's, uh, about Ned's books, about Faye, is that he uh, also adds a lot of tables in the end where he talks about um, what types these Fay would fit in. So if you need a divine Fay, please check out these Fay. Um, this is very interesting and important. If you have a specific campaign or a specific part in your campaign and you want to just check out something uh, from the Feywild, you want to use something from the Feywild, but you're not sure what it could be. Okay, moving to the next book. This is Gimbal's Guide to, um, to the Feywild. Uh, another big book, uh, over 80 pages long, with, again, different approaches and different parts of the book itself. This one has, for example, fake crafting. It's, there's a big section on magic items, on fauna, on flora, uh, and different describing different places. Now, this is the describing of the different places is somewhat risky because with official lore, um, these places might just cease to exist and you might have a problem with not being compatible. Uh, but that's uh, usually the case with homebrew. Uh, so you already probably see the different uh, art style and different style of the book itself. Uh, I do like the definition of uh, of the Feywild that they took over here because it's slightly different than uh, the World of Wonder. The Feywild is a place of magic, illusion, and high emotion. A place of the brightest sun and the darkest night, of wonder, fear, and occasionally ridiculousness. Where a terrifying forest may turn out to be a harmless and an encounter with an innocuous seeming old woman could lead to an uh, untimely death. For those who find themselves within the boundaries of this strange place, the line between illusion and reality becomes consistently more blurred until it becomes impossible to know whether the things you are seeing and the emotions you are feeling are real or illusion. Um, so, um, the author over here in this book tries to give this clear idea that the Feywild is not only a place of wonder but it's also a place of devious illusions and it's a place that is somewhat terrifying uh, for the visitors um, the author David uh, Markivsky uh, is um, is also giving us some additional clues of how to run your Feywild so for example over here you have the time in Feywild now in the dungeon master's guide you have the time dilation and deletion and uh, you should uh, roll on a table uh, whether minutes are hours, days, or years, or whatever else. And over here, you have a slightly uh, different, well, not slightly, a different method of counting time in the Feywild. So uh, it's based on emotions, which is, again, something that is more suitable, probably, for the Feywild. Um, it looks like it's complicated, but it's not. Um, an easy way to calculate how much time has passed in, to, in the uh, Prime Material Plane while player characters are in the Feywild, is to take the number of days spent in the Feywild, then add one additional day for each encounter or emotionally tense time period experienced while in the Feywild. If that encounter involved one of the Fey Elders, add three days instead of one. So for example, you spent seven days in the Feywild, you had eight normal encounters, and one encounter with a Fey Elder means seven plus eight plus three days, that's 18 days. And this is um, this is something that has this time deletion and has uh, that time deletion and has this factor of strangeness, but at the same time, it's not like you just rolled on a random table and all of a sudden a year passed and all your plans as a DM get to get thrown out of the window because they don't matter anymore. Um, you have different courts, uh, obviously. Um, but there are some interesting takes on courts. So, for example, you have the Court of the Decadent, um, or you have the Departed, which are courtless, more or less. Uh, the Kingdom of the Fomorians are also taken as a court, which is also very, very interesting. Um, the Court of the Decadent lets uh, ostentatious lives of abject finery, frequented by galas, balls, uh, politics, assassination attempts, and intrigue roughly what every fake court has. While in public, each member of the court hides their face behind a mask, depicting the visage of a demon, devil, goblin, or some other horrific figure, espousing the virtues of showing the darkest uh, self to the world. A new, cool approach to the fake. Uh, and obviously, you have cat blocks, so, for example, the Fumorian King, with 
uh, with some additional lore information about him. Um, and you have some race options, you have the fake crafting options with some uh, instructions for the DM. Uh, now, crafting and harvesting in D&D is something that's been totally omitted by uh, the designers up, up until now. So uh, I always enjoy such books. It's hard to implement such mechanics, but it's uh, I find it very um, important. Uh, players often ask about how would I get something from that creature, from that character. Journey into the Feywild by Jackie Leung. I hope I didn't mess that name up. Um, is another book. It's shorter than the other books. It's, I believe, 60 or 50 pages long, but it's super informative and it has a very, very interesting approach to the uh, to the Feywild. Um, the way in which it's written is um, very much to the point. There's much less um, descriptions around the Feywild and much more uh, to the point descriptions for DMs. So, for example, connecting it to the other planes. Connecting Feywild to your other, other planes. Mythical creatures roam between these connections, uh, though true Fey natives will most often remain in the Feywild. Guests uh, and entities of different affiliations, creeds, and natures can travel the lush dimension uh, whenever a bridge is created. Elemental planes can easily be connected to the Feywild, as such and manifestations are extremes of an aspect of nature. For example, the elemental plane of fire is often full of volcanoes, rivers, uh, lava, tornadoes made of fire, and the last landscape is usually dry. So over here you see very to the point of description, uh, this um, plane of existence connects to this and that's it. Um, you have, again, very uh, concise descriptions of types of courts that you can have. You can have four seasonal courts, you can have one court, none courts. Um, and there is obviously some lore behind it. Mm, so there are reports and notes taken that suggest the Feywild is in fact one unified world under a single banner and ruled by a separate uh, entity. Um, this is very vague, but this is not the point. This is just giving you options, listing basically options that you can take for your game. And this is a book that I used a lot because it's uh, simply very easy to use and very easy to... Um, uh, to get inspired by. Uh, what is the Feywild? Uh, how it works? Uh, again, as mentioned, very concise and very precise when it comes to language. Uh, this is, by the way, a book where you have a, a CR30 Archfey with 620 points and an armor class of 3, which is uh, the Queen of Arian Darkness, which is um, pretty rad. Um, and some Additional uh, options, like for example, hags, how to roleplay hag, what is hag, ma hag magic, uh, how they work, uh, with additional pointers to towards other books that you might um, that you might want to read when it comes to um, to the fate. And surprisingly, that is all I've got for you today. I know this episode was rather strange. It was more about general inspiration in Dungeons and Dragons, uh, more about how to get inspired by different sources. I didn't talk about books. I didn't talk about specific movies that you can watch. Why? Because there are many great examples of um, channels and people that did that better than me. And one of the book, uh, one of the books that I mentioned today, um, you have a whole page devoted to different positions, literature positions that you could read when it comes to payout. You have Wikipedia pages about that. Uh, D&D Beyond made a whole episode about about different pop culture resources you can use uh, as an inspiration. So I felt that that would be slightly redundant, me just saying, go read Alice in Wonderland or go watch this movie or that movie. Um, those informations are really easy, easy to find. Uh, what is a little bit harder is uh, to find proper books, proper publications, and proper things that not only inspire you, but give you proper tools to use in your games. And basically, this is what basically Feywild was all about, giving you tools to use in your games so that your games might be more fun for you, more immersive for your players, more complicated, and more wonderful as the Feywild is.